Hebrews 12, 13, sorry, verse 12 to 16. Thank God for each and every one of you. And thank God for each and every one of you watching from home. And we pray that the anointing that takes place here will also reach you where you are in Jesus' name. Hebrews 13, 12 to 16. Shall we all now read together? Ready? Read. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered with the gate. Let us go therefore unto him without the camp, hearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, that we seek not one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for we such sacrifice, God is well pleased. Praise the name of the Lord. I just want to zero in in uh, verse 12. But let us pray in the name of Jesus. Let us open our mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Let us pray for this word. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we glorify your name. We thank you for your sheep, Lord. We exalt your holy name in this hour. Thank you, Father. For we are seeking your presence. We are seeking your intervention. And we are seeking, Lord, that the blood that you shed on the cross, the blood that we pay, our sin, we pray today, Lord, that that blood will speak again. And that blood will manifest itself in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please let all have a seat in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, this month is the month whereby we're going to talk all about the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. So we have then this month, the month of using and celebrating the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. This is not a, a, a something new. The blood of Jesus Christ is one of the weapons in the body of Christ. So we have three weapons in the body of Christ. We have the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God, and the blood of Jesus Christ. So these are supernatural and powerful weapons we have to use in our warfare. When we have spiritual warfare, you have three weapons which we have to use. The name of Jesus Christ, the word of God, and the blood of Jesus Christ. These are different to the armors, the armors, the spiritual armors which we use. Like the helmet of salvation is an armor. The breastplate of righteousness is an armor. The sword of the spirit is an armor. But I'm going to talk about the weapons, and one of the weapons I'm going to talk about throughout all this month is the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we look at uh, verse 12, it says, Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Without the entrance, without, we all know that the gate means the entrance. And he who has the gate has the control. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you have the, the Amplified Bible, it says, Therefore, Jesus also suffered and died outside the city's gate in order that he might purify and consecrate the people through the shedding of his own blood and set them apart. As only for God. So the blood that was shed was shed for you and for me in order for us to be set aside for the Lord. But I can I start to say to you that there's no gift God has given us more important than the blood of Jesus Christ. Yet many Christians do not fully comprehend 
the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. What is worse is that many believers, even whole con denomination, all congregation, have stopped preaching and singing about the blood of Jesus Christ and its power. In the house of God, we must not neglect the blood of Jesus Christ. It is a weapon, and it is the only means God used to redeem man after the fall in the Garden of Eden. We must not forget that in our prayer we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. In everything we do, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Whenever we're eating, whenever we're drinking, we must always plead the blood in that drink and in that food. We cannot afford that we are having a meal and we do not plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ has the power to release the grip of the great curse. The ramification of, of that, that are immeasurable. The blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than you can think of. We all know when the children of Israel were in Egypt, God said to them to, to put the blood of Jesus, to put the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost. And that was important that when that blood is seen by the angel of death, the angel will pass and will not kill people in that dwelling. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Our natural blood supplies life-giving oxygen. The blood we have supplies to us the life-giving oxygen which we breathe in every day and we breathe out the monoxide of carbon. And nutrient to every cell in our bodies. So you have to remember the blood which you and I have give us the life-giving oxygen and also the nutrient for ourselves. Where there's no blood, there's no life. If you take the blood out of our body right now, we will no longer exist. We will die. The same thing if you do that in the animal, you take the blood out of the animal, the animal will die. Blood is a loving, a life-giving power. If the flow of the blood were to get cut off from a, an area of our body, that part would begin to die. Spiritually speaking, any part of our life that is cut off from the blood of Jesus Christ, that part of the body dies instantly. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The reason why I'm saying to you that we have to learn to plead the blood of Jesus Christ all the time is because once the blood of Jesus Christ is not in us, we die spiritually instantly. Therefore, when we pray, we must plead the blood of Jesus Christ. When we eat, we must plead the blood of Jesus Christ. When we drink, we must plead the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is also a weapon you use in a warfare. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are having nightmares, if you are not having good sleep, if you are seeing like people have been chasing you or people have been fighting you, the blood of Jesus Christ is a very good weapon you can use to paralyze or nullify the enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blood is so important to God that it is mentioned in the Bible. So please do not fool yourself or do not ignore the importance of the blood. I've explained to you in the natural context is a life-giving oxygen. It also gives nutrient to our cells. And I've said to you that if the blood of Jesus Christ is not in our bodies, that part in us dies instantly. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. In this Bible, we just read every day, you're going to see from Genesis to Revelation, the word blood is being 
been written 700 times. And David called that blood the incorruptible blood. The apostle Peter is calling it the precious blood. And John is calling it the overcoming power of the blood. You cannot plead the blood of Jesus Christ and be easily corrupted. Corrupt, corruption here is not about only someone giving you money or you take something illegal. But corruption here is also about when you become under the influence of worldly things. When you become under the influence of lust. You become under the influence of the pride of life. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye. This is corruption. And when Peter is saying that we are, we, he talked about the precious blood of Jesus Christ because this blood was sinless. And the overcoming power of the blood, we all know, is the power of the blood that overcome the work of the enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When we apply the blood of Jesus Christ in our lives, there are manifestations and results which make a difference in our life. You cannot use the blood of Jesus Christ, you cannot plead the blood of Jesus Christ and be the same. No, there must be a difference in your life. You have to notice tangible difference by you using the blood of Jesus Christ every day in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. You will be cleansed. You will be purged. And thoroughly you will be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The things that led you to be angry or to gossip or to envy, the blood will wash those things away. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at the person next to you. Just tell them. There's a power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Brethren, from uh, those of you who are watching from home, there's a power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And if that blood was not shed, you and I wouldn't be here today, and you and I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to talk about Jesus Christ. It is this blood that brought us in relationship back with God. The blood that reconciled us with God. The blood that made us to be adopted in the bosom of the Father because of this blood. We should not neglect the blood. When evil hear the blood of Jesus Christ, they do not come close. When you sleep, maybe you didn't know. When you, you sleep, the Lord release the blood and cover you with the blood and build a wall of fire around you. The blood speaks so much that the enemy cannot touch you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to look with you in eight areas of the power of the blood. The power of the blood. The first area, the blood protects and saves for there is a power in the blood. The Blood protects and saves, for there is a power in the blood. If you look at Exodus 22, look at Exodus 22. If you take Exodus 22, Exodus sorry, sorry 12, 22, Exodus 12, 22. If you look, look at Exodus 12, 22, the Bible says this. And you shall take a bunch of Esau and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. Strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The blood protects and saves. Let's say it together. The blood protects and saves. The blood protects and saves. 
The Israelites were commanded to kill a lamb and dip a branch of Esau. Esau is a common herb used at the time in, in uh, the oriental part of the world. To dip that Esau in the blood. They were then sprinkled in the lintel and side post of the front door. That night, as the death, the death angel came, he passed over every door where he saw the blood on the doorstep. Everyone whose doorsteps had no blood lost their firstborn. Those with the blood were spared. If an Israelite had left the blood in the basin, instead of applying it, the death angel would have struck their home. Kill the lamb would have done them no good. The shedding of blood was not enough. The blood only had the power to save when it was taken out of the basin and applied. The blood protected and saved the people from death. Brethren, it's important to understand that there's no need for you to save the blood of Jesus but you do not apply the blood of Jesus in your life. We have to be able to apply the blood of Jesus Christ. I have to be able to say, Lord, I soak myself in your blood. Lord, I plead the blood over my soul. I plead the blood over my spirit. I plead the blood over my body. I plead the blood over my children. I plead the blood over my wife. I plead the blood over my grandchildren. I plead the blood over every brother, every sister in the house of prayer Christian Center. I have to be able in my prayer, in my daily prayer, to appeal on the blood, on the life of each and every one. So I know that the blood protects and saves. Can I hear an amen for that? Can I hear an amen for that? The second thing, the blood protects from judgment. The blood protects from judgment. Let's look at still again in uh, Exodus 12, 27 now. In Exodus 12, 27, the blood protects us from judgment. That you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptian and delivered our household so the people bowed their head and worship. Did you hear that? The people bowed their head and worship. When the angel of death went from house to house to kill when the children of Israel noticed that, they bowed their head and worship. It is something today. Coronavirus are eating some of the houses, but they are not come to your house because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. If today you are alive, you are in good health, it is not that you are better than those who have died. But because the grace of God is upon you. The blood of Jesus is always on the lentil of your heart. And when the angel of God sees the blood, the Passover, when coronavirus is coming around, see the blood of Jesus Christ, it passed over. It cannot stand because of the blood. The blood protects us from judgment. The blood protects us against the walls of the enemy. The blood protects us against any plan the enemy has set to destroy our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. The final act of public expiation has been made on our behalf. If you look at Leviticus 17 verse 11, the Bible says quite clearly, for the life of a creature is in the blood. And I have given it to you to make atonement for yourself on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one life. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I just want to explain to you a two word here. Expiation or atonement means reparation. 
Atonement or expiation means, at, means reparation. And there is another word you see here in Leviticus 17, 11, talks about the altar. Altar. The altar is a place of covenant, is a place of worship. I don't know uh, in your life where is your altar. But please, in your life, have an altar somewhere in your house. The altar is also a place whereby all these unrighteous, all these wicked people, they go and make some kind of a covenant there, and through that altar, they can begin to invocate evil spirit to destroy us. Do not, do not take for lightly the word altar. Because altar is a place of covenant. It's a place whereby you meet with the doors who have supernatural power over you. Praise the name of the Lord. You remember that Balaam and Balak, they built several altars whereby Balak, who was one of the princes, wanted the children of Israel to be cursed. And those curses, Balak wanted Balaam to do it at the altar. You must have an altar in your house. You must have a place whereby when you go, you can talk to God. Because people who are agents of Satan, they have also their altar where they've made a sacrifice, where they've, plead, they've uh, 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 used the blood to make invocation when they want to destroy life. You also have to have a place in your life where you can go and call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's where become your place of covenant, the place whereby you worship the Lord, the place whereby you speak to the Lord for your spiritual need, for your natural need, for everything pertaining for your life, your children, and everything you possess. You must have a whole time. And when you go to your altar, always you plead the blood of Jesus Christ on that altar. You do not go and plead any other blood. Because if you plead any other blood, remember the blood of Jesus Christ is too powerful. And there cannot be two blood in one place. Either you have the blood of Jesus Christ or you have the blood of God or bird, or whatever you want to use, or human being. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Brethren, you may not be aware of, you know that every time men on earth have tried to cut a deal, they will use blood. Either they will use an animal blood, or whether they will kill a human being, and use that blood and pour it in that altar. The altar is the place of covenant. It is the place of worship. It is the place where a deal is being made. And whenever they want to kill you, let me take an example. If they want to come to Europe, you, my brother, my sister watching me, just hear me now. For them to come in your house and harm you, they don't need to travel. In fact, they don't have a visa or a passport. They just go to the altar, whether in your village, whether in your city, whether in your neighborhood, where they cut that deal. They begin to call your name from there. They say, John, wherever he is, he will never find a way out. I strike John. My brother, because that altar has a power, the blood has been shed there. It will reach you wherever you are. By the time you begin, to talk all your theories or all your uh, uh, philosophies or your doctrine into relate because that blood will pursue you where you are and whatever they've invocated there will reach you and then you begin to face pain and harm. Do not 
neglect brethren. I appeal to you from this day forward. Whenever you're praying, plead the blood of Jesus Christ because the blood of Jesus Christ he is the final act of public reparation done on our behalf. When you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, whatever blood they plead, in any altar, wherever they are, it will not make any effect because the blood of Jesus Christ is the blood above all blood. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Do not also make a mistake. You know that those witches and wizards, if they want to block you in your life, that you cannot be able to progress, all they can do, they just take your name, they write your name in a piece of paper, they fold it into and take a nail, go in the bush or whatever they have, they put it on the tree and nail it. You can go up, you can go down, you can go on the left and right, do whatever you want to do, it won't work because they have completely imprisoned you. So therefore, when you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, you live a righteous life, you live a life whereby you fear God, you live by his commandment, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. No weapon formed against you in life will prosper because that blood will speak. Number four, The blood of Jesus Christ. In number four, my judgment has been satisfied and I am at peace with God. The blood of Jesus Christ brought a satisfied judgment and brought peace between man and God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ brought a satisfied judgment and brought you at peace with God. So we say, my judgment has been satisfied and I am at peace with God. Because of the blood. That blood which was shed on the cross brought a satisfied judgment and peace between you and God. When people are in trouble, you're not in trouble. When people are talking about not sleeping well, when people are talking about insomnia, when people are talking about people pursuing them at night, when people are talking about, I saw myself going back to the river where I used to bath, it will not happen for you because the blood has fulfilled that job for you. It has satisfied your judgment before the Lord when they accuse of the brethren. May an accusation unto the Lord. So that's why in Isaiah 53 verse 5, the Bible says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his tribe we are healed. Remember, you and I went and committed sin. But he accepted to shed his blood because the blood he is the only commodity to repay what was made as a transgression. And also it says, he was bruised for our iniquities. When we always keep on repeating the same sin, the same sin, the same error from generation to generation, Christ has to accept to be bruised for our iniquities. Remember, when you look at Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the Bible says that God will bring a seed and that seed will be in enmity between the devil and the woman and Jesus Christ will bruise his head and he will bruise Jesus, he bruise the seed head. So the devil, he has no time to negotiate with you to destroy you. So you have to be awake. Do not fool yourself. I have seed in my 
lot of people who started well. But somewhere down the line, things went bad. And since then, they never recovered. So, brothers and sisters, you are watching this broadcast. If you used to live a life whereby God wasn't your center of focus, make a decision this day forward that Christ be the center of your focus and the blood of Jesus Christ is not neglected. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Number five. Number five. Look at number five. Number five, the bloodstream of his people, Israel, will be purged. The bloodstream of his people, Israel, will be purged. Look at Joel chapter 3, verse 21. For I will cleanse the blood that I have not cleansed. For the, the Lord dwells in Zion. Zion is a type of spouse of Christ. Zion is the church. Because many of us living in the house of God, we have not been purged. We have not been cleansed. We still live the whole self where we used to lie, we used to commit adultery, we used to envy the wife of our neighbor. In fact, this morning when we were reading uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, one of the things that God keep repeating was saying that thou shalt not lie with your neighbor's wife. And if you lie with your neighbor's wife, thou shalt surely die. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. If you, those brethren, you, you, you were not here, but we were reading in Ezekiel 18, but where you are or at home, if you have time, look at Ezekiel 18. One of the things that God has repeated several times as we read, he said, that never's wife, that shall stay away from it. Hallelujah. You cannot keep on going with somebody, you know that this person is married. She or he has a wife or a husband. But you still have envy to go and lie with her. The Bible is saying, if you do that, that shall surely die. And the Lord himself will kill you. And I pray, none of us is among those kind of sins. And we will not envy anything that has not, are not ours. If I cannot have it, I will not envy it. I will not take things which I know I will not be able to pay. If you, are, you have the habit of borrowing and not paying, this message is for you. Yes, Christ shed the blood on the cross. But remember, if you borrow, go and pay. Because God will not allow people who are bad creditors. And also those of you who have the habit of borrowing money to people and asking a return for interest. God spoke to us this morning. Anyone in my people in Zion, this is Zion. Anyone in the church who will borrow the money to people asking for an interest in return. The Bible is calling it usury. When you read it in Ezekiel 18, you find it's called usury. I cannot, as I am this day, standing in God's pulpit, borrow money to my brother or to my sister and ask them to pay back with interest, God will kill me. And the same thing will happen to anyone who has heard this message that if you borrow and ask for interest on it, God will kill you. And the blood stream will not purge you because you have gone outside God's rules and God's precept. But I pray that the blood will cleanse you. The blood will thoroughly wash you as it is explained in Joel 3.21 that whatever mess is in your mind, whatever mess is in your heart, whatever mess is in your body, that will be put out in the name of Jesus. That will be sound in your mind. In your relationship with people, that will be sound. In your relationship with yourself, that will be sound. In everything you do with people, you will be sound. You will not let selfishness 
agreed to overcome you because of sometimes people come in the house of God. They have the name of Jesus Christ, but their heart is not for Jesus. And I pray this will not be your portion in Jesus' name. And when your blood flow in you, it will flow freely from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And Christ will purge you all the time in Jesus' name. Number six. The blood keeps us spiritually alive. The blood keeps us spiritually alive. Remember in the beginning I said to you, if there's no blood of Jesus Christ in any part of your body, that part becomes completely dead. They will not, that part of the body will not receive anything from Christ. In John 16, verse 53, the Bible says, Then Jesus said unto them, Most assuredly, I said to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Unless you eat the body of the Son of Man, you drink his blood, you have no life in you. Remember, life is in the blood. And this blood brought us back from the power of sin and death. We lost our dominion. We were no longer men whom God predestinated for new before the foundation of the world. Sin had control over us. Death has authority over us. Christ has to come and shed his blood on the cross so you can recover and retrieve the authority. We cannot avoid to celebrate the Holy Communion. That's why in this house, every first Sunday of the month, we have to celebrate the Holy Communion. We have to do it in remembrance of what Christ has achieved for us. Parent, where you are from home, and those of you who are here, you don't have to wait for the first Sunday of the month to celebrate the Holy Communion. From your home, you can also have Holy Communion. From your home, you don't have to wait the first month, the first Sunday of the month. You can celebrate the Holy Communion from your home. All you have to do, you have to walk right before God. You've got to stand right before God. Sin should not be part of your nature. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And for us to have Christ's nature in us, we must eat of his body and we must drink of his blood. Number seven. Number seven. He said, I can, I can participate in the sweet communion of remembrance of his sacrifice. Look at Luke 22, 20. Because Luke calls it the new covenant or the blood of the new covenant or the blood of the new testament. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which he shared for you. Brethren, it shows you the importance of the Holy Communion. We talked to it in point six that it keeps us alive as we celebrate this sacrament. And number seven, it says it makes us participate, we can partake, we can partakers of Christ's nature when we celebrate the Holy Communion. When we celebrate the Holy Communion, it makes us to remember what Christ has achieved for us. Brethren, you may not understand what I'm talking to you here, but those who are wicked, those who are fortune tellers, those who are necromancers, those who uh, uh, worship the dead, will tell you the power of the blood. Will tell you how much they have not been able to attack you because they saw the blood. The blood that was shed. 
Remember, my brothers and sisters, every time, whatever we are, we have to preach the blood of Jesus Christ. I remember there's a sister, every time she saw something which wasn't right, the first word which will come from her mouth, the blood of Jesus. And then people were laughing and saying, ah, what is it, the blood of Jesus Christ? Not everybody will understand this. This blood will only work for those who are righteous. Those who are in covenant with Christ. It will not work for anybody. It will only work for those who are in Christ Jesus and do this in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen for that? Can I hear an amen for that? Or tell your neighbor there's a power in the blood of Jesus. As I was saying, if the blood of Jesus Christ was not shed on the cross, there would have been no salvation. There would have been no healing. There would have been no deliverance. We would have been all crippled by sin. We would have been all crippled to such extent we will live eternally in sin and death will have a power over us and we wouldn't even talk about the resurrection of the dead. But because of the blood that was shed on the cross, we are reconciled with God. We are adopted in the bosom of the Father. We are able to call each other brother and sisters because of the blood of Jesus Christ. If that blood wasn't shed, I wouldn't call somebody's not from my tribe, or somebody's not from my ethnic, or somebody's not from my race, my brother and my sister. But thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ, I am able to call you and to call her or him, my brother, my sister. The last one. The last meaning of the blood of Jesus Christ or the power of Jesus Christ in our life as a believer. The blood of Jesus Christ justifies us. Say this loud to yourself. The blood of Jesus Christ justifies me. Again. The blood of Jesus Christ justifies us. What it means being justified. It means that God is not looking at you as a sinner. God is looking at you as the righteous. Being justified means just as if I never sinned. When God is looking at you, when God is looking at me, he's looking at us as if we never sinned. Why? Because of the blood that was shed on the cross. Whenever they accuse of the brethren, go and bring a report to the Lord. Jesus Christ is a counsel. He said, Father, I've already paid for that behavior. I've already paid for that sin. I've already paid for that mistake. I've already paid for what he did. And that is a privilege we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a privilege that wherever I go, whatever I say, the Lord does not see me as a sinner. He sees me just as if I never sinned. Just as if I never sinned. They may talk bad about me. They may remind you about my past. But the Lord is looking at me just as if I never sinned. And when the Lord look at you just as if you never sinned, you are righteous. You are just. And the Lord's presence is in you. He become your everbiding presence God. He become your shaman. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, the Lord is my shaman, my everbiding presence. Wherever I am, wherever I go, nobody can see me as a sinner. People will see me as the just of the Lord. As the just as if I never sinned. I've been justified by the Lord. Because of the blood shed on the cross. In Romans chapter 3, verse 24 to 25, the Bible says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation. Propitiation means reparation, atonement, by his blood. Through faith, 
to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you hear the saying? God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. So you committed sin. I committed sin. But God, since the blood has been shed, God is not looking at me anymore from what I did because of accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I am in Him. I'm no longer operating in my own strength, but I'm now operating in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May I invite you please to stand. We're going to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We've done the theory. Let's now do the practice. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Please remember. In September the, 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 the 6th. No, September the, the 7th. Our children are going back to school. Uh, before I finish this preaching, I'll be uh, talking to you about our children going back to school in September. But I want you, where you are in your house, to stand because we're going to pray and we're going to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at the first prayer point. Say, pray for the blood of Jesus Christ to speak better things in your life, speak healing, deliverance, and freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. You pray for your children, you pray for your wife, you pray for your husband, that the blood of Jesus Christ will speak better things in your life better than the blood of heaven. The blood of heaven doesn't speak better things, but the blood of Christ speaks better things in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ has delivered me, has delivered me. I'm no longer in bondage, I'm no longer in bondage. Pray, 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 pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Find your freedom. Find your freedom. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty 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 name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look at the prayer number two. It says, confess the blood of protection. Confess the blood of, that paralyzes the work of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. My brothers, begin to confess the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood protects and saves. Pray, 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 pray. For the blood of protection. The blood will protect you against your enemies. The blood will protect you against your adversaries. The, the blood will protect you against those who have lying tongues against you. Those who gang up against you. Let the blood speak on your behalf. Let the blood protect you. Let the blood save you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Man, 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 man. Pray, 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 pray. Let the blood paralyze the work of the enemy in your life. Let the blood paralyze every weapon concocted against you. Every weapon designed to destroy your life. Designed to destroy your children. Designed to destroy your family. Every weapon, Father God, designed to destroy this ministry. I paralyze it in the name of Jesus. I paralyze it in the name of Jesus. I paralyze it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's look at prayer number three. It says, number three, please say this loud and clear after me. Speak with confidence that the blood of Jesus Christ keeps me spiritually sound and alive. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Oh, speak with confidence that the blood of Jesus Christ gives you spiritually alive and sound in the name of Jesus. Hey, we come against every insanity. We come against any behavior. It's not in line with the word of God. Any behavior, 
Let it be heavy insanity. We come against it. We come against it. We come against it. Pray, 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 pray. That will be spiritually sound. You will be some spiritually alive. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at prayer number four. It says, confess the blood of Jesus Christ to purge and wash you thoroughly. I don't know what's going on in your mind. What you always think. What is always in your mind. Think anything that does not only go in your life. Pray, pray to purge you. To wash you thoroughly. To cleanse you thoroughly. Wash me thoroughly, Father. Wash me of my error. Wash me of my filthy mouth. In my mouth always profess scandalous mouth. Pray that your mouth be cleansed up with by the blood of Jesus. I will not, I will not insult. I will not be rude. I will not disrespect. Pray, 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 pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Purge me, Lord. Wash me thoroughly. Let my mouth be clean. Let my mouth be saved. Marco Tarabasica, my mind to be sound in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at prayer number five. It says, Plead the blood of Jesus Christ in your life in any altar raised to control your destiny. Brethren, I said to you, people who raise altar not only to kill, they can control you from the altar. They can bring barrenness. They can even decree. They say in your family, no one will get married. In your family, no one will reach this, this, this certain age. They go to that altar to remind the altar. Remember a covenant. In that family, nobody will make it. Pray that the blood of Jesus Christ, pray for the blood of Jesus Christ. In any altar, rest to control your destiny. Pray, 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 pray. pray. Any other way to control your destiny, to control your family, to control your siblings, to control your father, to control your mother, pray that the blood, that altar, to be destroyed, to be destroyed, to be destroyed. Gideon has to destroy all the altars of his father. Gideon has to cut all the altars of his father. May you cut the altar of your father. May you cut the altar of your mothers. May you cut the altar of your ancestors. In the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at prayer number six. Pray for the blood of Jesus Christ to repair sinful damages. To repair the demonic covenant of our ancestors in our life, in the name of Jesus. If you know anything that your ancestor did, where it follows anyone in your family, that no one can have a decent life. No one can. If anyone in your family is having children left and right, pray that altar today be repaired. Be repaired. Pray that altar. Break that altar. Break that altar the ancestors put. In the name of Jesus. And the polygamous relationship in the family. Break that, break that altar. Break that altar. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Break the altar. Break the altar. Every polygamous relationship. Any altar where you have to go and pour the blood at night. Come against it in the name of Jesus. Break it. Paralyze it in the name of Jesus. Paralyze it in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's look at the last one. 
let all read it together loud and clear. Ready? Read. Declare any altar raised against my life and my family. Let the blood speak over it in the name of Jesus. Let the blood speak over it. Let the blood speak over it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh 